Well, it looks like the Bank of Japan is becoming the odd man out here as the rest of the world, the ECB, the Federal Reserve, start to signal, at least verbally, that they are on the path to tightening, to reducing their asset purchases, to maybe selling assets off their balance sheets, to raising interest rates. You have the Bank of Japan vocally coming out recently and saying, nope, we are not doing that. We are still seeking our higher inflation targets. We haven't hit that yet. Despite the inflation that they have started to see, it is less than the rest of the world. So they are coming out and saying, we are not slowing down with our easy monetary policies anytime soon. And in this video, I'm going to explain why they have more leeway, more wiggle room for easy monetary policy than the rest of the world does, and how especially America will not wind up like the Bank of Japan, like Japan given monetary policy on the surface looks similar, but underneath the hood is vastly different. Ready? Let's dive in. Anytime you point out the debt to GDP ratio in America, the balance sheet expansion for the Federal Reserve, the money supply, the M2 expansion recently, the number one response is, yeah, but look at Japan. They've been doing this for decades and they haven't had any inflation, so we can do this and we'll be just fine. But we're not going to turn out like Japan because we haven't actually been doing the same thing as Japan. They've been doing something extremely different. This is where something like culture plays a big impact on how monetary policy plays out in the real economy. Take a look at this chart from LynnAlden.com. She detailed the broad money supply growth of the major economies, including the United States and Japan. And you can see that the broad money supply growth of Japan has been significantly lower than the rest of the world, especially the United States, over the past decades. So right here, I need to point something out that she details in this article, which I'll link below. There's a difference between broad money supply and base money supply. You can think of the base money as the bank's money. This is the money that allows the money that's in circulation to be created. Base money is the layer of the financial system that the broad money is built upon. Now, over the last 20 years or so, the Bank of Japan has been trying to cause inflation. So they've been doing things like lowering interest rates, printing money, but that has not led to an expansion of the broad money supply as much as elsewhere in the world. That's led to primarily an increase in the base money supply, that base layer, the bank's money that the broad money is built on. Now, why is this? mainly because the private sector has been deleveraging this entire time. You've had individuals and corporations that have been paying off their debt and increasing their savings. They have not been using that new money to spend. Contrast that with somewhere like the United States, who every time they got stimulus checks, all that money was just spent. All the corporations that got their hands on massive bailouts, they didn't do any deleveraging. The debt ratio right now of corporations in America is at an all-time high. It's never been this high before, despite the fact that we are living through extremely perilous economic times. There was no deleveraging. Contrast that again with Japan, who's been using this entire time to pay down debt and increase savings. Places like the United States have done the opposite. So compared to the United States or other Western countries to Japan, when all you're doing is looking at the monetary policy itself, when you're looking at the interest rates or when you're looking at the uh, money printer being on full steam, you're still comparing apples to oranges because you have to look at where that money goes. That was one of the main reasons why we didn't see inflation after the financial crisis because they didn't increase the broad money supply in the United States as a result of the financial crisis. All they did was replace the base money supply. The base money supply was full of mortgage-backed securities. Banks woke up one day, realized it was worthless, and instead of having this much money, the banks had this much money. So what the Federal Reserve did was they said, okay, we're just going to act like it's the full value and we'll buy all that, all those bad assets off your balance sheet. We'll recapitalize that base money supply. So certainly prices were higher than they would have been otherwise at intervention, but the price absolutely 
level of prices didn't change that much. Again, because it was the base money supply that was replaced and brought back up to the level at which it was before. And that was not the same thing that they've been doing for the last two years, where they're actively creating money that's going into circulation into the hands of corporations and individuals that is being spent into the economy. That's an increase of the broad money supply. And since Japan hasn't seen this and because the culture in Japan on how to handle your money is so different, they have not seen the same level of inflation as the rest of the world. And therefore their central bank has come out and said, they're still going to be trying to stimulate inflation, sticking to the same policies they've been doing for the last couple of decades. They are not getting tighter anytime soon. So next time you hear somebody say that the monetary policy in the States or elsewhere is going to lead us to end up just like Japan, the proper response is, I hope we're that lucky. As always, really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.